So today we're building the hood vent and I got to get the hood vent, figure out dimensions on that. We already have the vent, I just need to get it out of its box that it's been in for a year. We're building the pretty case and then possibly some shelves and some trim around the window. If that doesn't happen today, you'll see it in the next video. We'll try to get there, we'll see. You can buy an inexpensive hood and dress it up real nice. We actually paid like $300 for this unit. On clearance? No, it was new. Was this one not the clearance yeah, one? No, it's just what it cost to buy a unit. A struggle. I would consider it a struggle. Get out of the bottom of the box. Yeah. Okay. It's actually got like a crate around it. This is what I would consider a naked hood, meaning it's just the components that go to it and then you add all the gloriousness later. And eventually we will put a vent out the roof, but for now we'll just build it, add the piping later. Where are all the buttons that go on that? That is a curious question. Are they in the side? Maybe. It's like a little baby towel. I bet you we can make something from these. That'd be cool signs. So we thought we didn't have the buttons or anything, but come to find out, all the components are right here that we need. We Hopefully. bought this a year ago, so. Hopefully. Oh, yep, there they are. And this is a much bigger motor than your cheaper $100 units that you buy. So that's why we decided to buy this independently because we did want to pay for the casing that we weren't using and we got a really awesome motor. All right, so this is gonna hang here about right there. Standard cabinet depth is about 12, 12, 12, inches, 12 inches on top. The vent range, or the range vent, range hood, whatever you wanna call it, the hood, typically pokes out a few inches past So let's that. do 13 inches. That way, when we put the shelf on there, it's not like massively poking out. Okay, I do have to have enough room to put the vent up through the center. All right, we'll go with it. Dealer's choice, 14 inches. <laughs> I drew up kind of a rough plan. The dimensions are right. The picture that I drew is not exact, but I'm gonna start getting this cabinet together. This is a Craig jig and pretty useful. You can get it at most hardware stores. I find it's really convenient when you've got to do joinery and you don't want to do a dovetail or dowel something in. creates a really strong joint, especially when you're trying to make a square box or a rectangle box or any kind of box. The bottom of the vent, where the lights and the switches go, has two little tabs and it pulls right off. And now I'm gonna flip this over, mark where the screws go, and then I'll mark that on this piece here, and then I'll cut that out, and then I'll have a nice big opening that's perfectly fit for this. birds out there getting all over the place. I'm trying to walk on the concrete. Luckily, it's hard, so we're not gonna get tracks in there. No one's going up it the mountain. It was hot today and it started curing up real quick. Well, or they go in the neighbor's yard, like, get birds. Look, that one's digging in the dirt. This is what we're really filming here. Zeb is adding a shelf to my situation. So this thing is ever evolving because Jamie needed to see it up on the wall 
before I was done building it to see what she wanted. I'm like, no, we can't do that. You're just gonna have to imagine it. We're in the backyard here. We've got this graded 1 8 inch per foot slope away from the house. And this is 13 feet back here off the house. Joins up, this is six feet off the house. And then you come to the back, we're installing this drain system because this here, the yard kind of runs down a little bit. We did build it up high, so most of it'll go that way, but we need to get the water from going on the house. So we're installing this drain system. You can see Ty, wave Ty. He's taking his lunch break talking to Mariah <laughs> but anyway we're running this right down through there and then that'll that'll go around the side of the house I'll show you so the drain system gets embedded in the concrete runs along through here channels any water that would have pulled up next to the house It'll probably be about 15, 20 feet from the end of the driveway, but that's graded to run out onto the grass. So we should get uh, good drainage out onto the yard there. We're getting the drain going here and running that out the driveway. Pro tip on using a level, show them that bubble tie. So when you get to the edge of your line on the level, that's your 1 8 per foot drop. What I'm doing here is I'm doweling in some half inch rebar and that's gonna poke out about 24 inches. And then we'll tie some wire mesh onto that and that'll give it a lot of strength and keep it from sinking away from the foundation. That way we don't get like a sag here or a sag over there and start cracking the concrete and things like that. Roll that side good. We spent the better part of a day putting these concrete pavers in. There will be a six inch gap in between them where the grass will grow. They should look really good. All right, another day come and gone. This is graded and compacted. Arrington's finishing the doweling. And we are just about ready to pour. We've got to throw the remesh in here, which rolls out pretty easy. It's those big rolls right there. And we've got this drain. We tested it. The water runs from there down to here. It got pretty close. As you can see, there's a little bit of slope right here on the grade, but not a lot. <laughs> I have a five dollar charge though. If I'm, my face is in it. Five dollars. Well, see, that's why I'm only doing your hands. I can't afford anymore. <laughs> basically holding it against the wall. These will hold it up. Your job is to hold it against the wall. No pressure. Maybe we should cover this dirt. No, not yet. Unless you drop it. Okay. 
Okay, so you just push against the back. Keep it up against the back. All right, I'm gonna make sure it's centered. Well, it's not even close to the Over the stove. Nope, we gotta come your way quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll hold it up here too so you can see the height of it. Okay. Six inches. Okay. Six inches, it's centered. It's centered. All right. I need you to come back and hold this like this. Just, you know, you can't get on the ladder though, because I gotta be on the ladder. It was easier to not do it. We're drilling into the two by fours that are on the back of the wall with these mammon dramas. These are big, they're six inches long. Oh yeah, that's on there tight. I've got some old ceiling joists that we pulled out of the 1917 part of the house, this part of the house, and we're going to use these on this shelf right here, but we're not just gonna leave them looking like blocks. So I found this corbel. I bought a antique post. It's all chippy and old. I paid 50 bucks and this was the only good thing that came from it. We thought we would be able to use the post as a support because they told Jamie they were 10 feet tall. What? Turns out it's like seven feet tall when she got it home. But it's going to be great for a pattern. I'm getting my 50 bucks out of it and I'll use this somewhere else later. So when Harrington helps me, all my pencils seem to end up in his pocket, but I've got this little <laughs> tiny pencil and it's gonna do the trick. I'm just gonna trace this right here and use the upper portion of this corbel. We're not gonna do this fancy detail in there. I'm just gonna jigsaw this out real quick, do two of them, and that lines up just perfect right here. And this gives me a little lip so that I can do some trim around that shelf. So the plan at this point is to go ahead and use our 1917 corbels that we've used on the fireplace and in the pantry. We're gonna be putting those down here. Then we're gonna carry across an arch this way. We will ship lap up the front and then trim it all out. And I think the overall look is gonna be pretty good. We got a ton of stuff done this week. We got some trusses up. We got all of the concrete forms done and some concrete poured but we didn't finish this. <laughs> we got it started, the design. It's a little bit more complicated than we thought because sometimes we just don't know exactly what we're gonna get, but the box is done. In the next video, you'll watch us trim it out, get it painted, possibly put up some shelves. Make sure you guys are hitting up jamierayvintage.com for the paint. It's 12 o'clock at night. Make sure you guys are hitting up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products that we use. If you're interested in our clothes and home decor, you can hit up jamierayvintagehome.com. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY and half finished house projects. Naughty little birds. Get in your house. You're not supposed to be in the neighbor's yard. That's right. You, you too. You guys. These are like the rebellious teenagers. They refuse to stay. Hey, get out of the neighbor's yard. You too. Come on. Get. Get in. Nope, that way. Stop. That way. There you go. You live over there. Good job. You two, go, get, scootle, scooch, go, scoo, go on. No, don't get a snack. Get, get. This one is naughty. Get in your hole. Yeah, it's you. We gotta get their uh, run belt. Because the coop is too small for them to hang out in all day, but they refuse to stay in the yard.